Hello and welcome viewers of AVG News. My name is Oli Singube and uh, we continue with our reactions to the Patriotic Bill or amendments to the Criminal Law Codification Act in Zimbabwe, which we are told that cabinet passed earlier this week. And we have uh, on this show the chairperson of the, the national chairperson of the MDCT, uh, Mr. Moken Komishi, Honorable, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Yes. Welcome uh, to. What is your reaction to the, what was your first reaction to the news uh, that cabinet had approved amendments to the Criminal Law Codification Act? Uh, thank you so much for inviting me to this forum to have at least time and space to debate on the patriotic bill the patriotic bill is an emotional bill from the way i see it there are people who feel aggrieved by what is happening in the country the the, the patriot act of united states was necessitated by the september bombing 2001, which was an attack on every American person. The September bombing did not choose where the, where the person belonged, whether he was of which political party, Democrats or Republican or any other party. So it attacked on the nationhood of Americans. So their argument to put the Patriot Bill Act was necessitated because it was an invasion that came from outside. Yes. So they had to put a bill to protect themselves. So when you go back to the uh, Patriotic Bill of Zimbabwe, it's a, an internal conflict. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a strategy to resolve an internal conflict. That is very difficult for the objectives of the patriotic, patriotic bill to be achieved. Yes. Because it takes two to tango. There are probably three or so major actors in Zimbabwe. Yes. The, 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 the first actor is the government. The second actor is the ruling party. The third actor is the opposition political parties. And the fourth actor is the civil society organization. Yes. What the patriotic bill intends to, to achieve is that no Zimbabwe should should talk should talk ill ill about his country to a foreign uh, country or a foreign person. But uh, what we have experienced in Zimbabwe so far, people don't necessarily talk ill about Zimbabwe. But uh, what happens in Zimbabwe is seen by the today's technology if a person is beaten yes do you need to tell anyone that i've been beaten <laughs> recently we had the honorable Tofa's case where she was uh, in she was uh, uh, beaten by some zanpf activist in matoko did it require anyone to go on the top of the mountain to tell the world that Tofa was beaten. There is social media today, technology. There is a Media Watch organizations, United States, it's not the UN Watch is there. And there are satellite uh, cameras all over the world. And whatever happens can be seen by anyone. So we need to be responsible, all of us, starting from the government itself. Yes. The government should not be seen to be sponsoring any form of violence. ZANU-PF supporters must refrain from violence in abusive language, which is full on social media right now. And what I can guarantee you, if the government becomes responsible and, and, the, and, the, and the ruling party supporters also become responsible, it would be easy for the government then to find to, to find a person who will go out to America or to China or to talk ill about Zimbabwe. 
if I am like I am like Komish today, if I've been not been beaten for the last two, three years, I've not been violated in any way, I don't think I will be, have the energy or the guts to, to go on the social media or go to America or to Britain to say uh, I was beaten by Zanipef when there's no evidence, when when I've not been beaten. It won't happen. Yes. So but... that, that, that means the the people that are being alleged to be talking ill about the country are actually victims of what happens in the country. They are victims. Yes. If a person is, is raped or his home has been burnt down by a Zanpia fake device, do you want that person to keep quiet? Naturally, someone will cry. So in the process of crying, some people will, will, would come to ask and say, what has gone wrong? Then, then you have to tell the story as it is. Again, what I'm saying is the, the patriotic bill is actually a, a threat to, to the human rights in our constitution. It's a big threat. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Sorry, the, the patriotic bill, in a way, as you have said, uh, punishes behavior of private individuals going to embassies. Do you think Zimbabweans need to go to emb embassies? To, don't we have within uh, Zimbabwean institutions, a way of trying to get this restitution. If you are maybe beaten up, you report with the police. We know that the police, of course, uh, are said to be in the uh, working for ZANU-PF, but don't you think there is a way that we can solve this as Zimbabweans on our own without involving foreign embassies? Yes, I'm, I'm not encouraging the involvement of the foreign embassies. I'm not encouraging it. What I'm encouraging is that people must not be beaten. Yes. Their, yes. Rights must be, their rights must not be violated. Women must not be raped. Women must not be bent down. If we don't do those things, there will be nothing to report. Even the ones that want to go to the foreign embassy, they will, have, they, they will, they will go to the foreign embassy for a cup of tea and they will report nothing because we will have dealt with the, with the, with the source of conflict. Yeah. When a person is violated, is subjected, is tortured, is been abused, is 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 is, is now uh, is he, he, he is not. He, I mean, he is not vulnerable. He wants assistance. He wants help. He wants to be, you know, uh, cancelled. He wants to be assisted in any way. He wants refuge. He wants sympathy. That's the nature of a human being. So wherever the person will get the sympathy from, you cannot then sanction that. You beat somebody, you then say, keep quiet when I beat you, don't cry, you don't get treatment, you don't get any counseling, when, you, you, when you've beaten me. So if you don't want me to go to any to the neighbor to talk about you as a bad person, just stop beating me. If you, if, you, if, if you don't beat me, I will never go out or anywhere to talk ill about you. In Zimbabwe, you come into your question, Yes, uh, it's imp it's impossible for a policeman to arrest his unpeaceful violence perpetrator. Very impossible. If ever it has happened, it's uh, it's probably less than one percent. Why is that majority so? Of the, the majority of the, the violence perpetrators go scot free. The, the the state organs in our country, they are. The fear is unpeaceful. I don't know why. They they don't use their constitutional powers. The constitution gives them all the powers to deal with anyone, regardless of political affiliation or whatever. But when it comes to real operation and to, to real uh, behavior, the, the the state organs feel subordinated to to ZANU-PF authorities. It's like the ZEC officials. They, they are subordinated. They really fear the officials. So that's an issue that we need to, to, to deal with. They yes. need to be educated. They need to be empowered. They need to be freed from the jaws of the people. So this is what happens. So sometimes even if you go and report your case to the police, they will hardly act or do anything because of the subjugation which they've gone under for a period of time. So we need, that's why we talk about 
reforms, electoral reforms, media reforms, political reforms. We need the these kind of reforms to be instilled in the in the in our institutions, such as the police force, ZEC, Human Rights Commission. They must be independent as per the definition in the constitution. They must act independently. They must not feel subjected to a ruling party. You see what so far what I have seen probably other countries have done quite well in Kenya. Uh, you know, is there's quite some improvement in the institutions in Kenya. Uh, the independent commissions try their best to operate independently. In Zimbabwe, we have not yet reached that. We know we've got a very good constitution. But operationally, our institutions need a lot of uh, education. They need We need women and men with guts, uh, women and men that has got the confidence that can stand up against the power and the authority to say, no, what you are doing is against the constitution. So yes. this is actually one of the challenges that we have. So that is all these weaknesses I'm raising contribute to the to why people then run away to some other people to seek refuge and assistance. Because internally there's nothing, you cannot go anywhere. If if we had these state organs or, or the or these state institutions independent enough to handle these matters, people would flock towards the police force. Remember uh, in some years back, I know you were not at one, but uh, what I remember is every time when you would come from home in Harare or in Blue Wave, when you when you when you get lost, you would look for a a police station. Yes. Because you would feel good they would assist you to directions and everything else. So we need to build this confidence in these state institutions. For now, I think the confidence is undermined. People uh, people fear to uh, because they have not been assisted. So really the patriotic bill, the the main job the main duty to deal with the patriotic is the government and the, and, the, and, the, and the ruling party. They must create a conducive in a, a environment conducive enough for people to trust the, our internal, uh, our local institutions. Yes. The moment you get that help from the police and the other institutions, no one will, will go out. Yeah, we, we are agreed well, that yeah. uh, there is a lot of partisanship, especially in terms of uh, the police uh, doing their duties. But then the other uh, argument is that when opposition activists, because they are the ones that have been accused of reaching out to foreign embassies, when they get there, they don't get there to report factually about what is happening, but they go there to ask for sanctions. Uh, what What is your response to such? Is the opposition involved in asking for sanctions against Zimbabwe or asking for their reinforcement for those that are already there? I have been a victim of ZANU-PF abuse myself. Yes. And uh, I was incarcerated in Zimbabwean prisons for a very long time. I was tortured. I never went to members and asked for sanctions. I never did that. I never did that. So I cannot say, the re I, I don't have any of the evidence that there are people that go to the foreign embassy and ask for sanctions. Sanctions, don't, you don't need to ask for them. They can be imposed because of the actions that, that because of the human rights abuses that are taking place. Because when human rights abuses are taking place in a country, it's not uh, something private. It will be public. Many people will be seeing it, international organizations will be seeing it, and they will have their own evidence collected from by using their own uh, system, systems, the satellite systems, everything else. So you you don't need to to really ask for 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 sanctions for you to, to for the sanctions to be imposed. If that if, if if it was as easy as that, South Africa could be under sanctions because we have got oppositions there. Yes. Zambia could be under sanctions in the world because there's opposition political parties there. But because the Human rights abuses are very minimal in those countries, so there's no there, there's no justification for any other foreign country to impose sanctions on South Africa. Why is it that other opposition pol political parties are there in Africa, all over Africa, but the countries those countries are not under sanctions? What is the difference between the political environment in Zimbabwe and in those other countries? So which means the the government itself is got to is got to answer that question. Not not opposition political parties. Opposition political parties are actually victims of human rights abuses. Uh, did, so did you, to, put, to, did, to put the burden on the opposition political party, do you yeah. think today if MDC goes to America and says remove the sanctions, sanctions will be removed? 
Do you think if Triple C today goes to America and say remove the sanctions, we have no power, we, we, we have no control, we, we are just a place. We don't want sanctions in Zimbabwe ourselves. I don't want sanctions in Zimbabwe myself. They have caused a lot of pain on, on, on me and my family, and the Zimbabwean families as well. They have caused a lot of pain. I don't want them. I don't like them. But we don't have that control whether the sanctions should be there or not. So then we have to put that burden on us. They are misdirected. Uh, did you see the letter by uh, the former MTC spokesperson, uh, Kukutu, about the sanctions and him begging for forgiveness from Zimbabweans? Ah, uh, that is Kutu. That's politics. Kutu is now uh, is now aligned to Zanfia. So really, taking what he says seriously will be misguided. It's, it's not fair. It's, I've, I've given myself as an example. I was uh, abused, arrested, and uh, tortured, and incarcerated for such a long time. But I never went to American embassy to ask for 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 sanctions. I've never done that. So what Kutu is saying are his personal views. There are so many media issues that we have read about uh, Comrade Matutu, Tungai Matutu and so forth. Those yes. are really, those are not something sub substantive. It's not substantive. It's just political. Oh, oh, right. You have already told us that as uh, Senator Mok and Komichi, you are against sanctions, but the MTC T, I mean the MTC Alliance as a party, where does it stand in as far as sanctions are concerned? We are against sanctions. We are against sanctions. Sanctions must be removed. We must find ways of removing sanctions. Currently, yes, I've seen efforts that are being put by the government in many other organizations yes. to remove sanctions. But uh, I think they are, they are not enough. The efforts that are being put is not enough. Uh, what is actually happening now, from the way I see it, would actually make uh, the sanctioners happy. The sanctioners are the reasons why. They put sanctions on us. If you are guided by the Zidera Act and the main other media stories that have been written, yes, the sanctions are, are used as a de deterrence factor on protecting the, their interests in like in African countries. So what is happening currently? When we make noise, when we make matches, the 25th of October march, when we get uh, other African countries involved now on our side. Sympathetically, it's correct. Sympathetically, it's okay. But the person who is actually putting sanctions is very happy that Africans are actually feeling. Yeah. Actual Africans are crying. Like today, I've, I've, I've read President Ramaphosa talking to Britain, talking to, to the Queen and so forth, talking to, to the King, eh? sorry, talking to Joe Biden, President Joe Biden. That's exactly what they want. That's exactly, was that's a deterrence measure. So they are, they are now clear and sure that no African countries will ever take land again from the, from, from the white, uh, white men. Because one of the reasons why the second up there was actually as a result of the land reform, on top of the human rights abuses that, that also happened during that, that time. So it's a, it's a combination. You, you, you would know, you would see clearly that uh, Africans are, are now feeling the pinch of of the sanctions. So no African country will take land from the whites okay. anymore. So so the Americans and the British are actually happy. So we need to have another method of dealing with the whole issue. We need to think outside the box. How can we treat and deal with issues of sanctions? This is where Zimbabweans must now must put their heads together. There must be other ways of making sure sanctions are removed. While it's crying and making noise can be done alongside, but I think a more strategic uh, platform has been created which will ensure that sanctions can be suspended or can be removed. And as, uh, and, as, far, as far as we can engage, uh, sanctions will be on us for a very long time. Come. And how effective has Pollard been in terms of bringing political parties together, not only in fighting against sanctions, but also in ensuring that these democratic reforms that you talk about get to be realized? The, the Pollard platform is a very noble platform. It needs uh, to be inclusive of, of many other political parties. And uh, we need to remove the jacket that it is carries. And uh, I think the idea behind the Pollard is a platform was very good because it's a platform to dialogue on these issues that affect the country. Uh, this is the, the platform that should dialogue even issues of sanctions. 
is the dialogue that should that as a platform that must also talk about issues of electoral reforms <laughs> and economic reforms. This that the political parties must be responsible enough to talk about it. I would want to urge political parties to move away from the contestation of power as a major item to the contestation of economic development growth for the people of Zimbabwe to benefit. I want political parties to to realize that we have had independence as Zimbabwe for the last 42 years. But when we then look at the economic side, we are still suffering and we are suffering much more. Therefore, as leaders, we must be responsible and say, okay, I want to be a leader. What do I want to be a leader? Do I want to be a leader to, to just grab power? Or I want to be a leader so that at least the people of my country can live a good life. I can improve these issues of social economic aspects of my country. I can re- improve employment, you know, reduce that unemployment rate, which is so high and uh, make sure that hospitals and schools are well-funded and everything else. As a leader, this is where I want to urge every political leader to move away from power contestation to the, to the contestation of economic growth and, uh, and development. So to me, uh, Pollard minus its uh, negative perception that it has got, but looking at it, it, into the inner matter, the inner matter of, of, of Pollard, I think the objective and the strategy was good. So what is required is for the political leaders to realize that we now need to sit down and dialogue. When we dialogue as Zimbabwe, not only political parties, by the way, you must involve other stakeholders, such as churches, labor, the economic community, the business community, women and youth, the academia, the traditional leaders. You must sit down. Political parties involved must sit down so that we dialogue and look at the issues that affect our own country. What are the issues that are challenging us as Zimbabwe? Where are we where where are we missing it so that we in, improve or develop our own country economically? I believe if we dialogue and, and we develop what I think uh, is is Zimbabwean Charter. The Zimbabwean Charter should carry all issues that affect us economically, politically, socially, environmentally, religiously. We have our own document where that unite us. And when we get united under that document, under that document we come to become a one family. Uh, the, the argument by I'm those edging, who have, sorry, uh, I'm saying the argument by those who have refused to join Poland is that uh, Zanu PF has never been sincere. In fact, it wants to continue uh, reigning over the opposition. Do you think I, this? I, uh, sorry, I want uh, people to think outside the box. Yes, and say. So, what is it that we want to achieve as Africans? Africans were got the challenge of importing certain systems that we are using to run our lives. And what I intend to achieve with the national dialogue I'm calling for now, I want Africans to, to debate and dialogue and develop an African governing system that is different from the current one, and that is system from the that is is different from the Western influence or the Eastern influence. I want Africans to develop the homegrown governance system that is based on the African culture and African identity. The governance system that is not going to be measured or monitored or uh, evaluated by foreigners. The current governance system that we are using, it it entirely depends on the evaluation of the Western world or the Eastern world. We, We So we need to look at that and say, these are some of the reasons why we are failing as Africans to run our own affairs, because we are using borrowed systems, and those borrowed systems we don't we we don't know how to implement them fully. As we fail to implement them fully, we are then sanctioned, we are exploited, we are we we, we are undermined, and and we are we play a second role, fiddle in 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 the world economy. So the African governance system that I'm encouraging is not only for Zimbabwe, it's for Africa as well. Because I believe if we believe in, if we develop an African governance system that is Africa based, African identity, we will have, we'll achieve the total freedom that we have not achieved so far. African countries are independent. I agree with you. But they are not free. They don't have the freedom. Because we still look up to America, up to Britain, up to Europe to develop our economies. We still are up to behavior, behavioral act, the way we behave in, in our own countries. We need a nod from the Western world. We need the way they nod from the American, the British. We want them to, we want them to say, yes, 
you have done well as a, a Zimbabwean president. That on its own undermines the confidence, undermines the integrity, undermines the, the ingenuity, the intellectual capacity is undermined by that because you are playing a second field. You want to please somebody because we are using their governance system. So we need to develop an African governance system that has got nothing to do with the Western world. That has got nothing to do with the Eastern world. Let me give you an, a typical example. China developed its own governance system. Who tells us that is, a, is, a, is, a, is an undemocratic thing? We are told by the Western world because they got their own reference. But if you look at the Chinese economy, the majority of the people of China are living well above, above the top of that timeline. The economy is, is, is growing. They got their own governance system, which they developed. They developed. And from 1980 to now, China is now a, a, a superpower in terms of the economy. So Zimbabwe itself should initiate the African governance system that should spread to Sadat and spread to other African countries. The moment we develop our own governance system, we're not going to be evaluated by the West, watching by the West. We will evaluate ourselves using our own internal systems and institutions that we have developed. What I'm talking about today, I'm happy. I'm happy. I got the reference, the way I can refer what I'm talking about today. Uh, what is happening in, in, in Rwanda today? That's the governance system I want to, us to develop in which the, the, the parliament is, uh, has got uh, different political parties. But we need to, to, to transpose that image from parliament to the cabinet. I want the cabinet of, of African countries to be, to be occupied by all political parties that will have acquired the threshold of being in parliament. When you have a cabinet that includes opposition parties that, that are in parliament, you then don't have anyone who will go to the foreign embassy to go and undermine what's being done by the by the government, because that person who who has occupied the threshold of being in parliament wants to play a positive role towards a ministerial role that will be given. Uh, what how is what how, I'm just a minute? How what easy I'm, is it for Zimbabwean opposition parties to let go of Western embassies when? Uh, there are allegations that most of them are sponsored by these Western embassies. That is that is the the problem of the current governing system we have today. It's a winner take all. Thing. So the winner take all system that we have today is exclusive. So when people feel excluded, they are vulnerable. They can be abused. They can be formed by the Western embassies, and they would feel accommodated, and they think they can get the help. They think they can be okay, they, they, get, they can get something to assist them. So when we have an inclusive government setup that I've talked about, like the one we had during Shangri and Gabe's time, there was nobody who then left his office as a minister to go and dine with the British to undermine his own government. There was no one who left the cabinet post that he had to go and dine with the American embassy to undermine his own cabinet. There was no way. So this is what we are saying in 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 Ishon at not. You know, that we used to do, the kind of system that we use in our law home. That's the governing system I want Africans to develop from. Modernize it, develop it. But it's, it's impact. You could see people used to work together to work in the, in the, in the fields or to work somewhere together and, and then share a cup of beer and a, cup of, and a piece of meat, working together, cooperative approach. This is what we need to do as Africans to develop our own system. System that it got nothing to do with the Western world. So it, it is Senator, possible. We, we've got less than five minutes remaining. Uh, is it Zimbabwe is a polarized state uh, politically? I've seen you've called, to, uh, you've made these calls for unity on Facebook, and what you have received from fellow opposition uh, activists are insults. They are saying you are, you, you are now working for ZANU PF just because you you split from the party that is led by Nelson Chamisa. So how easy is it for the opposition, let alone all the other parties, to work together in this kind of environment? It's, it, it, I, I, I do agree with you. It's actually a big challenge, but it needs leaders beyond leaders. People that have got a vision. Uh, probably I want to say I've got a vision myself as Morgan. I want to see President uh, Munanga go to the check. He should not feel you know you should not put again you must not be you must act beyond uh, being a president of the party you must be a statesman 
a leader of the country, probably the influencer of an African future. He should do that. What, what I, I want him to do, what I would want him to do, is that to call for a national dialogue, which, which is inclusive of all other stakeholders, and let the stakeholders, the political parties, discuss the future of the country. Probably encourage each other and to, to, to develop a governance system that I've just talked about. And he, he is a leader, he must take the lead. I know opposition political parties, they might not be able to take that lead because they, they are also ambitious, they also want to have positions of power. But leadership rests with the, with, the, with, the, with the president of the country. Currently in Zimbabwe, I'm so happy that majority of the stakeholders, churches and civil society organizations, are now preferring the national dialogue. I'm happy about that. Majority of the political parties right now, uh, the majority of MPs right now in Zimbabwe, they want the national dialogue to take place. Even some MPs in MDC, some MPs in the Triple C, they're actually favoring the national dialogue as the way forward. They we are now convinced that without national dialogue in Zimbabwe, we will never improve our economy. So I want to urge and I want to request, I want to appeal to the Zimbabwean president to take the lead, to take the lead by making sure that we do something different. Something different. And, and, just, in a, and just in a minute, uh, you, you're talking about President Nangaku. You've worked uh, in Zimbabwe under President Mukabe, now under uh, President Nangaku, of course, from the opposition bench. How would you rate Nangaku compared to Robert Mukabe? Is he better or worse? <laughs> <laughs> President Nangaku is a... Is a he has done quite a lot uh, in the three years that has been the president as far as the economy is concerned. I think he, the economic pillars that we have in Zimbabwe now were no longer there during the Mugabe's time. So he has put a lot of effort. That effort in the, as far as the economy is concerned is uh, is thumbs up. What Where I want us to improve together with him and the main other is the political side. Later, later, the political side is the one that's going to affect the, the economic side of our of, of his vision. So, for example, if we were going to go for an election next year, he must make sure that the election is violence free. If yes. the election is, go is going to be blood and violent, all the positives that he had achieved for the last three years will be destroyed. All the re engagement that he's been trying to achieve will be destroyed. All the efforts that he wants to, to do to rejoin Commonwealth will, will be destroyed. So our challenge today, the monster that is before us, is the 2023 general election. So we need to find ways of dealing with this issue of general election. And I've always said the All Stakeholders Conference will have an answer towards this. So that we can preserve the effort that has been put so far in as far as the development of the, our, our country uh, it achieved so far. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. We hope uh, we can, I can see that you've got a lot to say. Uh, we had very limited time, but I would like to plead with you publicly to avail yourself maybe weekly or twice a week just for these kinds of engagement because we are going towards 2023. We know that there is not enough space in our public media in Zimbabwe for you to talk to the people, but also we want to have this uh dialogue that the kind of dialogue that we've just we had with you because we believe that we need more of these opposition voices especially on issues concerning zimbabwe i don't know if you would commit right now that you'll avail yourself maybe at least once a week uh, i can even give you twice a week ah okay thank twice you very much I'm, I'm available i want to talk about the national dialogue agenda so that yes. i want many people i want many leaders to appreciate what it Zimbabwe has got a serious conflict, and it's, this is an economic conflict. It is enough for the Zimbabweans to dialogue around the economic conflict. Otherwise, yes. if we do not pay attention to the economic conflict, the, the conflict will devour uh, Thank you so much, Senator, uh, for gracing this show. We will talk to you uh, and try and arrange the days that you'll be available so that we can have these kinds of dialogue. Thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciate Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.